So behind me is the drop of the Yukon Striker. Passengers are being carried up the lift hill aboard the train. And they're on their backs. Once they get up to the top, they level off. They make a 90 degree turn to the right. They're brought out to the precipice. And we slowly inch them to the edge. They're held there for about three seconds. They dangle their feet from the floorless coach. And then when we release them, that's when they start their plummet towards the earth at that 130 kilometers an hour. And here they go. It enters into the lake, which the vortex also goes around. We plunge into the vortex uh, helix, into that hole in the pond, and then come up uh, on the hillside behind. My name is Peter Switzer. I'm the Director of Maintenance and Construction for Canada's Wonderland. I've been involved with this project since we conceived of it back in 2014. When I get up to the top, I, I like to take in the view, look all around. Um, I get to the edge and because I've ridden it so many times now, it's, uh, it's not scary, it's exciting for me. I know what's coming, that, that rush of adrenaline as we plummet towards the earth. It's, uh, it's quite a thrill. I'm very, uh, I'm very excited to ride it every time I do. It's 3,700 feet long, which is the longest coast, dive coaster in the world. It's also the tallest dive coaster in the world, to 245 feet for its uh, first drop. It's the only dive coaster of this make that actually has a loop, so that's a unique all on its own. I'm Norm Protovchik, General Manager of Canada's Wonderland. I've been here now uh, 40 years, and uh, basically I've had input with pretty well everything that's gone on here over the period of time. Uh, this particular ride, Yukon Striker, was actually conceived almost five years ago by Walter Gulliger and myself uh, in doing the layout, and it's taken to this, this point now before we actually came to the build. The build started almost two years ago uh, back in the tunnel in the water because we needed to do that prior to the ride actually being put into place. So it's, it's, it's taken quite some time, as you can see, but I, as you can see behind me, it's it's a massive ride and it's, it's uh, one heck of a ride. Many years ago we had um, Skyrider, which was a stand-up roller coaster made by Togo out of Japan. And it ran its course and we, we took it out back then to start planning for putting this ride in place. We knew what was going to come, so that felt good. But for a lot of the coaster enthusiasts, obviously it's the only stand-up coaster in North America at the time, or Canada, I should say. And so it was a bit of a sad moment for a number of them, but they did eventually get over it. And I know a number of them are riding now quite happy. We looked at the dive coaster, particularly because of the mountainous size of the drop and really tying it back to what we now have come to have or put together was as Frontier Canada. And I think that's really our anchor ride for this um, themed area, which is something that we wanted and that we were very pleased with the way it's turned out and how it blends in extremely well to our, our vision, you might say. There's an engineering that has to go on, obviously. When you look at the topography of the, the area, we have to take that all into consideration. So a topographical layout of the entire area is made, sent over to B&M, and then from there the ride gets constructed once we do the basic layout, which is what you see here. We've gone through a number of reiterations before we get to this point, mind you, because we keep trying to twist it, make it a bit longer, give it a little more excitement, or add elements that we know will be beneficial to the rider. So we start with a general concept when we plan out a ride like this, and we talk about what elements we want to include, but then we also need to integrate it and make it fit into our existing landscape. And, and fit with the other buildings and structures, as well as our underground infrastructure, because we've got quite a diverse infrastructure underground. Um, once we make all that work, then we start with the hard work. Um, we're limited to constructing in the winter, uh, because we're an operating theme park. We, we operate only 150 days of the year, and we do that in the best construction time of the year. Um, so we're limited to doing that in winter months. So we're, we're pouring concrete at minus minus 30, minus 40 degrees. We're standing up steel in, in snowstorms. Um, we're doing all that hard work when most people are inside staying warm. Um, 
So it, it is a challenge, but we've done it a, new, a number of times now and we're, uh, we're getting pretty good at it. When we took, a, took upon uh, starting the construction of the tunnel, we had to uh, reposition the, the waterway that ran through the park. So once we got that new channel established, we were able to start with the excavation um, and the shoring for this uh, tunnel. Um, we worked through the, through the winter to get it built, um, get it closed up in time for the season to, uh, to be underway. We actually constructed this in the, in the winter of 2018. We had it done before uh, opening day of 2018. So it sat here all last summer, finished, with track pieces inside the tunnel. And then when we closed again, in the fall of 2018, we were able to resume the erection of the steel at that point. We had challenges with the erection, trying to get the steel up, because we needed multiple cranes to do that work. Um, during the foundation construction, dealing with the underground infrastructure and making sure that we didn't in interfere with any of that, that was a challenge as well. The construction of the tunnel was a challenge with, uh, with some of the rainstorms that we had and trying to keep the, the water out of the tunnel during the construction, that was a challenge. Dealing with commissioning this ride, we started the commissioning in, in March. We needed to have six weeks of runtime on this thing before we could put people on it. So uh, the weather conditions needed to be ideal to complete that. So th there were many along the way, but in a 16 month build time, no doubt you're gonna have some, right? So. To see the last piece get lowered into place and the bolts fit in, to have it aligned just perfectly with millimeters to spare on either side with no fighting no pulling to get it to close um, that's pretty rewarding because we're talking you know there's 200 foot elements here and and to have millimeter precision that's it's pretty good something that you have to ride to experience. I mean, clearly when you're up there at that drop and looking down and you're being held for three seconds, you, you certainly have second thoughts about what you've done when you got to that point. But after that point on, it's just sheer exhilaration and gosh, just a lot of fun. Yukon Striker, well, there, there was a number of, number of names that came out, but again, I think we started looking at, uh, I, I believe there was uh, Logan's Run, and a few other things that, that are actually in the Yukon, and, the, and I think the tallest mountain in the world, uh, or pardon me, in Canada, is in the Yukon. So, of course, we picked that because we thought, you know, Yukon bigger than life, well, this is bigger than life, too. So it ties in extremely well. <laughs> Our vision was to create Frontier Canada. It was something that was started back in 1976, was part of the original park design that never did get built. Frontier Canada is really something that depicts what we what we feel Canada is all about, whether it be the logging industry, the mining industry, and just adventure on its own. I mean, really, we are an adventurous group of people. We, of course, went and took that direction and, and thought, let's, let's go ahead and finish the park and put Frontier Canada in its place. But obviously, we did it in small, small segments with the... Um, soaring timbers and the lumberjack ride and a few of the other rides we put into place but we needed this anchor and obviously taking the time that it did to build it's now come together and we're very pleased with that to see the construction come to an end and and see people enjoy it and to hear the screams it's very satisfying because we know we've we've completed it um, and had it ready for for our guests to come and enjoy it you know we're going to see millions of people come through our gates this summer and to have it ready for them um, it's it's pretty satisfying my kids say that i have the best job in the world and and, and most days i feel the same way there are other days when i don't but um, but it is very satisfying to to see it move from sketches on a piece of paper right through to the people screaming it's it's pretty satisfying